Howdy. And so we've seen that the valence electrons are the outer shell electrons that dominate chemical behavior. And we've seen that elements in column have the same valence electron configuration, and so they tend to behave alike. We've seen that the column number actually is equal to the number of valence electrons, so as long as you're ignoring the transition metals. And so alkali metals have one valence electron, alkali nurse two valence electrons, calcogen six, halogens have seven valence electrons. We've also learned that the normal gas configuration is extra stable because it's composed of full subshells, and that's why the normal gases are not very reactive. And we've learned that elements tend to gain, lose, or share electrons to get normal gas configuration. This is referred to as the octet rule because all the normal gases except for helium have eight valence electrons. And so typically when two nonmetals react, they form a molecular compound by sharing electrons. We've seen that the more electrons being shared, the stronger the bond. The smaller the atoms, the closer the atoms, the stronger the bond. More electrons being shared is the most important consideration. Now, if you want to understand the molecules better, one tool you can use is the Lewis electron dot diagram. Lewis electron dot diagrams are simple yet powerful tools for understanding where electrons are in molecules. Are they bonding electrons or non-bonding electrons? No matter how far you go in chemistry, you will always use Lewis electron dot diagrams. And so this video is a basic introduction on, into Lewis diagrams. And so after watching the video, you should be able to describe the basics of Lewis electron dot diagrams. You should be able to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams for simple molecules. And so again, Lewis diagrams help keep track of electrons. Where are they? Are they bonding or non-bonding electrons? If you know the number of Venn's electrons, writing Lewis diagrams are fairly easy. And again, Lewis diagrams are just about the valence electrons. We completely ignore the core electrons. Lewis diagrams are primary use for S and P block. We do not use Lewis diagrams typically for like transition metals, lanthanides or actinides. But it's essential that you learn how to draw Lewis diagrams. You will use them for the rest of your chemical career. As long as you're doing chemistry, you're going to use your Lewis electron dot diagrams. And so Lewis dot diagrams, each valence electron is represented as a dot. A single dot means the electron is alone in orbital. A pair of dots means you have a pair of electrons in an orbital. And so we've seen previously that the electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, Lewis diagrams were only concerned about the valence electrons. And so that's the outer shell electrons. And so that would be these six electrons. Now we got two pairs. And so we have two pairs of dots. And we got two electrons in lone orbitals, and so we have those two there. Now, it doesn't really matter how you arrange them, but you should have two pairs and two by themselves. So you can do it this way, or you can put the pairs there, pairs there, or pairs there. It doesn't really matter, but you should remember that the Lewis diagram reflects the um, electron energy diagram, and you should have two pairs and two by themselves. And again, remember, we're only dealing with the valence electron configuration, the valence electrons. And so we can look at the first three rows of the periodic table. And so remember, as you go down the column, those elements have the same valence electron configuration. And so they have the same number of valence electrons. And so notice that their Lewis diagrams look identical. You know, for instance, going from fluorine to chlorine, we see three pairs and an electron by itself, three pairs, electron by itself. And so for atoms, it's really pretty simple. We can use Lewis diagrams to explain ionic compound formation. We usually don't use them this way, but we could. And so sodium starts with a valence electron in the S orbital, and chlorine starts with seven valence electrons. And then when the sodium and chloride react, sodium and chlorine react, the sodium loses its electron, and the chlorine gains the electron. Lewis diagrams is a little bit more helpful when talking about molecular compounds where you have covalent bonds. And so we start with the Lewis diagrams for the atoms. And so again, for fluorine, you have seven valence electrons, three paired and one not paired. And when the fluorine share two electrons, then they both get noble gas configuration. And so again, noble gas configuration is extra stable because you have full subshells. And so elements tend to react trying to get noble gas configuration. And by sharing that pair of electrons, both fluorine atoms basically get noble gas configuration. And so this fluorine atom sees eight valence electron, giving it noble gas configuration. And this fluorine sees eight valence electrons, giving it noble gas configuration. 
And so the two electrons being shared are referred to as bonding electrons. And again, they enable the atoms to have noble gas configuration. The electrons not being shared are referred to as unshared electron pairs or lone pairs. Now, please note that we started with 14 valence electrons. So we always count the number of valence electrons that at the very beginning. And so here we have 14 and we use exactly 14. And so you have to use exactly the number of valence electrons that you start with. Now, typically we draw a single line for each pair of bonding electrons. And so this single straight line represents those two electrons. Okay. And so a question you could be asked is what is the bond order? And so you should remember that bond order is number of pairs of electrons being shared. Now each line represents a pair of electrons. And so for fluorine, you have a bond order of one and it corresponds to a single bond. A single bond always corresponds to a bond order of one. If we look at another example, here we have water. And so again, we're just looking at the valence electrons. And so hydrogen, each hydrogen starts with one valence electron, oxygen starts with six. And now if the hydrogen and oxygen share that pair, the hydrogen sees two, which gives it noble gas configuration of helium, and the oxygen sees eight. And so again, oxygen sees eight valence electrons by sharing with hydrogen, gave it noble gas configuration. And then each hydrogen sees two, which is the noble gas configuration for helium. And so nonmetals typically react by sharing electrons to get noble gas configuration. Now again, please make sure you understand that you know, we started with two, four, six, eight valence electrons, and we used two, four, six, eight valence electrons. You always have to use exactly the number of valence electrons that you start with. Could be asked, what is the bond order for the oxygen hydrogen bonds? And so we have two oxygen hydrogen bonds, but we only look at one. So this has one pair, a bond order is pair electrons being shared. So bond order of one, bond order of one, and so the bond order is bond order one, it's a single bond. Now those diagrams are very powerful. They tell us, you know, we have bonding electrons and lone pairs of electrons. They do not give us the shape. And so sometimes it's a little confusing. From the Lewis diagram, it looks like the hydrogen oxygen hydrogen bond angle should be 180. In actuality, the bond angle is a little bit less than 109.5. Okay, so please remember Lewis electron di diagram is very important, but they do not accurately represent the structure. You know, on here we have the Lewis diagram of methane, and so it looks like those bond angles are 90, but this is just a two dimensional representation, and so it's inaccurate. Down here we have the three dimensional representation, and so again the bond angle is about 109.5. Lewis diagrams powerful, but do not give us accurate representations of the actual structure. If we look at another example, here we have carbon oxygen, so four valence electrons, six valence electrons. Now, to get noble gas configuration, they actually have to share six electrons, right? So by sharing those six electrons, the oxygen now sees two, four, six, eight, noble gas configuration. The carbon sees two, four, six, eight, noble gas configuration, so they're both happy. Should also mention that you know we didn't worry about where the electron started. And so when I'm doing those diagrams, I look at number of valence electrons, I remove the valence electrons, and then I place them trying to get the most stable structure. It does not matter where the valence electron started. And so the carbon oxygen have a, a triple bond, they're sharing six electrons and that gives you a bond order of three. And again, please remember, you know, you start with a number of n electrons and that's exactly equal to the number of n electrons you used. We started with two, four, six, eight, ten, and we used two, four, six, eight, ten valence electrons. And again, the bond order, each line represents a pair of electrons. The bond order is the number of pairs of electrons being shared. And so our bond order is going to be one, two, three. That's a triple bond. All triple bonds have bond orders of three. And so the actual structure of carbon monoxide looks something like this. The surface is the value of electron density. The coloring corresponds to the electrostatic potential. And so Lewis electron dot diagrams are very, very important. You'll use them throughout your chemistry career. I hope that was helpful.